Hey guys, um, we fairly recently acquired an Arri Alexa Classic, which shoots 2K ProRes internally or 2.8K RAW externally. Gave me the inspiration to look at what would be the best method of upscaling this footage to 4K. Um, in this video, I'm gonna pit a standard timeline upscale against Resolve Superscale and Topaz Labs Video Enhance AI, just using recommended settings. I'll be using a mix of 1080p 4444 ProRes sample shots, as well as comparing a couple of shots from one of our recent short films, which Shane predominantly shot in 2K ProRes HQ, um, but also captured a few shots in 2.8K Arri RAW. The Odyssey 7Q was faulty, so unfortunately I only have a few shots to compare the upscaling from the 2K ProRes, uh, and the Arri Raw 2.8K to 4K. If you're not already, please watch ahead in 4K. Obviously there's YouTube compression, but a lot of our work, either narrative, personal projects, um, corporates or online ads end up online. So this is really where I'm interested to see if there's a perceptible difference. So let's get into it. Yeah, title says it, that was just 444, four. four, 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 four. There's all super scale medium. Topaz Labs. Topaz Labs, whenever I export it to ProRes, um, even 4444, um, it A, Resolve was telling me when I imported it that it was ProRes 422, and B, um, it looked soft. Um, it didn't look right, so I don't know what was going on there. When I exported it as a TIFF, um, it looked, you know, it looked really good and looked like it was working as advertised, if you know what I mean. Um, I did find I had, um, an ever, a, like a really minor, but a slight kind of gamma shift. Um, and I don't know if there's a setting that can be tweaked. For that, I mean, I, di I didn't worry about it too much for this test. I'm sure that's something that can be, well, I'm hoping that's something that can be fixed, but. Um, yeah, to me there, the, the Topaz ProRes looks the worst, but the TIFF looking at the the trees, um, yeah, looked really good. And I wasn't seeing too much that was looking, you know, bad or weird in terms of like artifacts or anything. Although when you zoom up like this, I mean, obviously no one's gonna watch it like this, but when you zoom up to 400%, um, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look great. All right, so we've dumped the, uh, stop using the ProRes because uh, in Topaz, uh, AI, because that was no good. Um, so I know this isn't, it's not the most exciting video, but I thought letting these play out for a little bit is the only way to really make them um, help you kind of judge what you can see difference wise. Um, and you know, the super scale's not not terrible, but those trees moving just look a bit odd. Whereas the the topaz tiff looks really good to me. To my eye, it looks really good. Um, I was pretty impressed. Though, like I'm watching this on a 4K OLED, and you know the 2K source, <laughs> even bl just blown up to 4K, I still think looks pretty good. But yeah, that um, that tiff file looks great, but. That was the only way I was able to really use Topaz Labs and have it working really well. And I'm like, oh, from a workflow perspective, that is not a, um, that's not a, a workable thing kind of all the time, depending on the content. But I think it's, it's definitely a tool. Um, you can see that artifacting sort of happening in the leaves in the bottom right there. Um, but yeah, it's certainly not a tool that you're gonna use on all your raw footage. It'll be an end of the process thing. And my thinking is if I'm gonna use it either on projects or on select shots, which is more likely where I'd use it, on select shots. So I'll just stop before I get into the um, into the 2.8K and, and 2K short film stuff. Um, 
Looking at it, uh, Topaz Labs was like hopeless um, exporting ProRes. I'm not sure why, I don't know if there was something like a glitch in my download or something, but um, when I exported 4444, Resolve was telling me the file was 422 ProRes. Regardless, either of those settings, it was quite soft, whereas the TIFF looked um, really great. So that's just split down the middle. I don't know if you can tell. You can see in the upscale or the the ARRI RAW, for some reason, when I was trying to put it through the ARRI converter, it wasn't working. Uh, um, Resolve was having issues with the files, but I was able to convert them in Adobe Media Encoder. So um, there is a bit of a, a slight color shift. I don't know if that's Adobe or the difference between the ProRes encoding. I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, here, if you see the Artemis TIFF and the Gaia, I don't know how to say that, HQ TIFF files, you'll notice that Artemis just totally shreds the uh, the noise, which I, um, maybe there were some tweaks I could have made to it, but I dumped that, although that might be a look some people are looking for, the uh, Gaia HQ, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if that's how to say it, that kind of preserved the natural noise of the um, on the ARRI, so that's what I, I stuck with for the rest of these. It was the least destructive um, AI model um, in terms of cleaning it up. And here, if you look at the eyes, they're sort of dancing around a lot more on the 2K one. So um, doing this actually really made me uh, wanna get another Odyssey 7Q. We, we were sort of lent slash given one. Um, by a buddy of ours at a local rental house. Thanks, Mike. Um, unfortunately, it cuts in and out, um, so we're gonna give it back, but but looking at the ProRes versus the 2.8K, even without upscaling, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm sold on I'm sold on this. I want an Odyssey 7Q, because that 2.8K upscales a lot better. Um, so this, this, um, sharpness set to high on the 4k super scale it was just a bit too much it really um uh yeah that's medium that's much better the medium super scale setting i thought was much better where i thought figuring out our best upscale pipeline could be useful is if we're doing a corporate job that the client once finished in 4k and to be honest no one ever no one ever asks and, um, for 4K. Still at this point in 2021, most of our clients are happy with 1080p, but they'll take 4K. Um, but say we wanna use the Alexa for some shots and they ask for 4K, it's such a great reference to have alongside our Blackmagic cameras, which are wonderful in their own right, but Ari is absolutely the leader in color science. Just the skin tones and color separation are so natural and nice. Even the noise looks like film grain. It's very organic. Anyway. Um, here's the Alexa alongside the Ursa G2 and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K, all with their native color science. So let's add Cinematch uh, and let's punch in. Cinematch is really great, by the way. I'm, um, I've got a video in the works just about that because it's become a big part of our kind of corporate workflow. Um, super scale on medium, uh, low denoising. This was sort of my preferred. Um, see here, super scale set to high. To me, that's just uh, has that horrible fake sharpness look to it. Um, it's just no good. Um, Topaz Labs AI, in this, obviously a very static set shot. I mean, we just did this really quickly in the office, but to my eye, it looks really good. There's not a lot of movement in it, but it looks really good. It doesn't have that fake sharpness look. So here you've got all four of them uh, side by side. And um, yeah, I certainly wouldn't use C, super scale um, set to high, um, but the others, like, um, I mean, to be honest, the Alexa just in 2K, like even just, just up resed on the timeline, like depending on what you're doing, especially when it's in motion, like it looks, it looks, it still looks really good. It's not as sharp. 
what what did you think um what did you see on youtube um and what do you think you would do like or are, are any of you like intercutting sub 4k footage that you're shooting with 4k cameras or in a 4k 4k pipeline and and how are you how are you doing that how are you making it work um i mean i think you know when you're looking at set shots you can really see those differences and everything but you know when you're when you're in a film that you're getting engaged with and there's movement and motion blur and all of that um yeah i think resolution like once you hit sort of full hd um it sort of becomes less and less obvious and less and less important uh at least on like a tv screen certainly on a phone um but let me know what you think i'd love to i'd love to hear what you think about how this looks on youtube because whatever differences I'm seeing, I'm imagining, I'm imagining they're um, going to be less and less because of YouTube compression. If you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it, um, feel free to share it and do the YouTube stuff and like, subscribe.